Uh, I figured I'd do another uh, topic video because I've been kind of mean to do something like this for a while, so I'll start doing it on Twitter. Why not? I want to talk about the mask situation. I'm not going to talk about it that long, um, but there's a lot of indignity, people pushing a back against people who don't like the mask stuff or refuse to wear a mask. And they get thrown into the same, like, oh, that means they think the pandemic's a hoax. They think they think COVID doesn't exist. They da 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 all this other stuff. Um, or they think it was caused by the 5G, you know, same kind of people. You know, completely different people. The 5G people and, the, and the, the, the ones who were like, you know, chemtrails and stuff, very few of them. A lot of people were making a lot of jokes about it. But particularly on the right, there's, there's not that many of those people. Although, if you search on the internet or you have a, you know, an extended family, you'll definitely find some of them, but it's not, um, that's not the reason there's so many people who are upset about the mask stuff. Uh, there's a couple things. Uh, first we, uh, be, it was because they were told they don't work and don't work. Don't buy them when really it was don't buy them up because we need them for our medical people. And they weren't honest about that when they said that. And this is, this is on Surgeon general, uh, as well as some of the States. And then all of a sudden they said, Oh, they do work. So uh, maybe you should wear one. That's that's pretty frustrating. That means people don't really believe what's going on. Plus, the numbers have been consistently wrong They're with them counting how many are infected versus how many are hospitalized, how many people died with COVID versus died from COVID. The numbers are no good. You can kind of make the numbers say whatever you want them to say just by shifting, uh, shifting stuff around. Uh, the second thing would be basically people complied for – the 15 days and then a month it was you know oh, stay home slow the spread and they're ready to be done with the lockdown and basically they're saying well because everyone's not wearing masks we're going to continue the lockdown and you know shame on you so people at that point when they see the authoritarian power grabs by governors like in california in new york and particularly here in pennsylvania at least i've seen firsthand um people don't like the power grab that the executive branch is getting so even if he's saying, oh, everybody should wear a mask, he's kind of lost his moral authority. And people are very untrust, like untrusting of basically the political leaders at this point because they've used it as a power grab, particularly on the state level. The feds have actually been pretty good about this. Uh, they pretty much just facilitate um, order and they've been doing really good with the CDC and the um, – I guess it was FEMA or whoever was running the, uh, the pop-up hospitals and whatnot and personnel. The feds have pretty much stayed out of the way, but the state governments, they're the ones who've been implementing um, weird rules like, oh, the barbershop's closed, but like you can vote. But you can't vote with more than two people. Like Weird, arbitrary stuff that has has really nothing to do with the lockdown. Uh, Michigan, for example, uh, they closed down you know gun, gun stores. Like, oh, you can't buy guns and ammunition during the pandemic because I don't know. It, it, very, very. Basically, they they were being very authoritarian, and now people don't trust a word of what they're saying, whether it's actually for their own good or not. So you can't really, I, I can't get upset at somebody who has now been commanded by someone they do not trust, and then everybody else is out there shaming them, being like, "Huh, well, you should have listened." It's like, yeah, but the governors were already wrong off the bat. They're already abusing their power, and if you don't listen to them complaining about the abuses of power, why would they trust you to listen about the value of masks? Um, and that leads me to another point, which is the signs and the rumors, including the executive orders, particularly in Pennsylvania, that say the mask wearing is a law. It never was a law. It never went through any uh, legislation. Uh, it's not something that can be long term implemented uh, without the pass of significant legislation. Uh, it's not just something the governors can decree or the feds can decree. They can recommend it. Uh, they can say we strongly recommend it, but the fact that they're make uh, there it's this idea that basically the store can't open or you can't enter a store or a public place without a mask. That's not a law, and if you tell people it's a law, and then they find out it's not a law, suddenly they're just going to not stop listening to it. Uh, that was one of the reasons I didn't wear a mask when I went to Costco a couple times because they had this big placard up that said, "By law, you must wear a mask." And I thought that was outrageous because that's not true. Um, but if I go into a store where they're asking, we ask politely that you you know you wear a mask at this time. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw a mask on. It's not, not that not that huge of a deal. I mean, I think it's not doing anything. I think it's kind of silly. But I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna fight it if it's just like hey look you know we'd like to be open and we'd just like to take extra precaution whether it works or not. 
fine. That doesn't bother me that much. But it does really bother people when you've been telling them it's a law, it's also a law, and then they find out it's not a law, and then you're surprised that they're not listening to you anyway. It's that's that's really not uh, th- that's not really a good argument because you you've basically you you've uh, enough people have who in authority have basically bankrupt their trust in these people. And then when they when these people were upset about being lied to or upset about uh, the abuses of power, everybody else said, well, you're just upset because you can't go to the, you know, the hair cuttery and you need a, you know, and you just don't want to wear a mask or and then they get mocked and they say, oh, you believe in 5G conspiracy. Like they get these people get lumped into uh, these other groups and that just pisses them off and then they're not going to wear a mask. Um, And I think actually the biggest one is. Other than the fact, basically, there's there's been no give and take. They just keep, like, enacting more restrictive rules. But the biggest thing was when the BLM protests happened. Um, the same people, many of these authorities, many of these doctors, healthcare organizations, and the particularly Democratic governors, Democratic city leaders, uh, they basically said, it's fine uh, that these mass gatherings and riots and dirty and trash infested BLM protests – are perfectly okay and necessary to the health of the nation, some of them are arguing. But if you want to go to a baseball game or just get your damn hair cut, uh, you know, they have to put all these weird rules or you got to wear a mask and do all this other crap. And and then they also, this was coming right off the heels of criticizing the people who were protesting against the lockdowns and against the government's abuse of power. You guys just mock them and said, oh, they're stupid, they're science deniers, when they weren't even, they weren't talking about the, the, the pandemic itself, they were talking about the abuses of power. So you didn't listen to them then, and then you had the nerve to endorse the BM, uh, the BLM protesters and say, no, that's per- that's okay because we like that cause. That That's okay. They did that. And those people, they, they see through that. They're, they're kind of annoyed because even if they were wrong, even if you disagreed and you didn't think the government was going overboard, um, you've now played favoritism with much larger, much less safe – I mean cities are burning down. People are getting shot. Uh, protests in, all over the country. And the doctors haven't said anything about that. There's never been a move of, oh, my like, – because there was calls when the people showed up at the capitals and whatnot. There wasn't any violence. I mean there's people who were armed, but there wasn't any violence. And they were saying, oh, you should send in the, the National Guard or the police. They should be arresting all of them for endangering public safety. They're, they hate grandma. They want your children to die. You know, the usual crap um, because they're trying to belittle these people. And, OK, you can disagree with them. But that doesn't help, and then it particularly doesn't help when you don't have the same visceral reaction to the BLM protest. Um, That's why nobody – that's why people aren't taking the mask thing uh, seriously. That's why they're taking it as an offense, and it just all feels like bullshit to them. I hope that makes sense because I'm seeing a lot of people online, uh, family members included, and – there's almost this smug arrogance of, of uh, oh, yeah, um, you're not wearing a mask because you don't want, you know, you don't care about others. You don't care about public safety. You're just a science denier or something. That's not really what's going on, and that's not at all why the people who aren't wearing masks are not wearing masks. They're not wearing masks because they're pissed off because they don't believe anything you're saying because they've been lied to. And if the vitriol against the, the BLM rioters was anywhere close to the, the, the daily – Stuff I see thrown at people who are just, you know, just want their lockdowns to end. They just want to go to school. They just want to go to work. Um, that's, a, that's the thing. If they just said, look, we're, we have to deal with this thing, but we can't keep the economy shut down. We can't keep kids at home. It's, this is ridiculous. So let's go about our normal lives. Let's wear the masks. Everywhere you're going, we ask everyone wears a mask, but everything else is open. Now, of course, some people won't comply still. That's fine because you're still – Mitigating what's going on. Uh, if you're sick, stay home. Maybe go grocery shopping for Granny instead of taking her grocery shopping. We take care of the elderly. If you've got pre-existing health conditions, hey, may- maybe there is some legislation that could say, hey, maybe during a pandemic, uh, if you have you know meet a certain criteria and you need a certain amount of time off from work, they can't fire you for that. I wouldn't be against that because that's something completely out of their control, and the whole declaration of a pandemic is the government's call. So – you know, that's completely out of their hands. And there's there's common ground, but it's been completely muddled in this 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 mask thing. Um, 
I mean, you guys have seen the videos, the Karen videos, of people going up and yelling at people who don't have masks or acting confrontational. Um, I, I, I had a, I had a bad experience at a, uh, I guess it was like a UPS store, FedEx store, or whatever. Um, where they, this was very, very early on, and they were just really rude to me. Um, and now it, now it's even particularly strange because there's these glass and plastic. Uh, uh, window things that are in front of like every register all over the place. I can you see if that's there, nothing's transferring from surface to surface. And if you think it's airborne, well, guess what? If it's if it's actually airborne and not just a droplet, that mask isn't going to do anything anyway because it's not rated for that. I mean, I mean, go ahead and read read the back of the box of the masks you bought. They're they're not rated for that. Uh, I think the N95s will prevent that, but it, it's overkill. And there's been no uh, okay. Look. If everybody wears a mask, we can go back to school. Now, instead, it's, uh, for example, Philadelphia, they canceled all public gatherings, uh, banned everybody gathering more than 25 people, which includes church and everything else, uh, for seven months out till the end of February. Now, that directly affects my business because I had a convention that was already delayed that was moved to January because of this. And now I don't know what's going to happen with that. So that actually cost somebody like me. That cost me money. And what's the justification? Oh, we think seven months from now, uh, it'll be bad. Well, we don't have overflowing ICUs. We actually have several treatments that work. Uh, Rendezivir is probably the most popular one, but the hydroxychloroquine with the um, acetromycin zinc, that one seems to work. Multiple studies have said that. Uh, there's the so with the blood antibodies or plasma or something. They're, they've got a bunch of them, and there's vaccines in the works. Uh, it, it's not a particularly deadly virus to your average person. And there's also no evidence of it transmitting with from kid to kid or kid to adult. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. Because you read it somewhere and then it's retracted two days later. We just don't know. But I just want to shed some light on the anti-mask people. Why they don't trust you and why acting smug about it and belittling them is definitely not productive at all. Because you got to convince them to wear a mask, not convince them they're a bad person because they don't want to. Their instinct is to not wear a mask. Um, I don't know. I, I guess it's because the it's the internet and people feel like they can just you know facelessly make blanket statements. Um, it's it's not. It, this this should be something where we're all kind of on the same page and we're not. It's politicized now. Um, this. Can we just be nicer to each other? Can we at least understand why some people might take a different perspective? Um, the fear is not helping. The, uh, the, the snarkiness is not helping. The um, calling people science deniers or anti-vaxxers because they don't wear a face. Like, that stuff's not connected. And the goofy people who put on the tinfoil hats because they believe in chemtrails and whatever, well, they're going to believe they're going to believe everything's connected. They, they were saying the 5G is connected to the... Well, yeah, but the 5G would be connected to something else if it wasn't this. They, they tie major events into it. That's how conspiracy theory works. Um, that's what makes it entertaining, and that's what mean, makes a lot of people joke about it. But those people are not the same people who are upset about the authoritarian overreach of government. And the mask is, by saying it's a law to wear a mask when it's not actually a law, and then expecting basically it to be socially enforced by people bullying... That's authoritarian, and people really, really don't like that. And they're probably not going to be listening to your argument about how you think masks are better if you are okay and good if you start off by saying, well, you're probably just one of those science-denying yada yada. We can do better. Um, I know it's the internet, but come on. It's 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 getting tiresome. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of the, uh, the oh, like... You're not special because you wear a mask or because you tell others to play a mask, uh, to wear a mask. It, it's, it, do, it doesn't make you any more conscious of a citizen. It doesn't make you any more virtuous. It's just a thing. And telling people they're crap because they are not on the same page as you after all this other stuff has happened, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. That's just going to breed resentment. So, all right. Wow, I went on for a while. Uh, catch you later.